to Damn Hit to review The Walking Dead Season 4, Episode 11, title claim. So let's get started. And first, I want to talk about the turn, the, well, the tournament slash sanctuary that we had found out about in this episode. We already knew about this, knew about this because we've seen Tyrese, we've seen uh, Car uh, Carol, and we've seen Mecca, Mecca and Lindsay find find the same thing. Telling them where to go to the sanctuary yet, slash tournaments. But now, in this episode, it's revealed that Michonne, Rick, and Carl finds it on a cargo, on a bus cargo, if I, well, on the train cargo, if I'm, if I'm um, wrong. But it has a map on there telling them to go to go, go to the same place. But this right here don't sit right with me. And me personally, I feel like this is a setup. Reason being, okay. Whoever runs this sanctuary slash tournaments, tournaments, you mean to tell me these people never encountered any bad people within these two years that the zombie um apocalypse outbreak uh, um has happened already? You can't tell me that. Everybody in that show has encountered bad people, murderers, rapists. Thieves, anything, it, everybody has, in, everybody in that show has encountered it. And second, you know you can't trust every human being because they're not right. So why would you take something like that and just broadcast it like that? I mean, they talked about it on the radio. They're going around putting maps everywhere. Why would you do that? I mean... Look at look at the governor. When the governor had Woodbeard, did you see the governor going around broadcasting saying, well, you know what? Come to Woodbeard. We got shelter. We got food. You're going to be safe there. No, he never did that. Hell, if you tried to escape from Woodbeard, the governor tried to kill you. He tried to kill you because he was scared. You gonna, because he was scared. You was going to go back and tell somebody else about Woodbeard. And that right there put him and his people at risk. All right. Point two, when Rick found that prison, well, yeah, when, when uh, Rick had found that prison, did you see Rick going around telling people about the prison? Hell, he even got mad when Michonne came to the prison. He asked her how you got here. And I remember Morgan Jones saying this in episode 12, season three. He said, Rick, because Rick was telling him about the prison, he says, Rick says, we have a prison now. He says, you, and, he, and he says, I want you to come stay with us. Morgan looks at Rick and he says, Rick, if it's, he said, Rick, if it's something good, Rick, then that means somebody wants it. And then he goes on to say, Rick, you either get torn apart by teeth or bullets, meaning that the bullet comes up, the bullet comes up, mean, meaning that somebody's going to kill you for your belonging, you, for, for, for your belongings. Also, I remember Garamo, I can't pronounce his name, the Hispanic guy from season one. He was in season one, uh, the Vatos. He was in the Vatos uh, nursing home. He was the leader. He was the leader of them. He was telling Rick that, uh, he says, we have plunderers. And plunderers, and I, and I looked it up, and he says, we have plunderers, the kind that take by force. And when he said that, I was like, wow. This that right there is that right there is exactly what these people is plunderers, and you can't trust a plunderer. And I don't see why, but like I said, that's not sitting right with me about them just broadcasting that that type of stuff. Because like I like well well because like Morgan said, if you have something good, then that means somebody wants it. So. Like I say, something ain't right. Something ain't right with that uh the sanctuary slash tournaments. Terrible tournaments in this episode that we that we got revealed. It might be a setup. Next, Rick. In this episode, I don't like the fact that Rick was playing Mr. Mission Impossible. I mean, he out there sneaking out windows and shit, all on roofs with his gun in his hand, damn this sliding off of roofs and shit, falling um landing on the ground and stuff. Up there sneaking around houses, playing, doing it, doing it, doing on some on. I, I would call him. He was on some assassin shit in his episode. I was like Rick, Rick Grimes, doing that. Yeah. Also in his episode, I noticed that Rick had on his wedding ring, and we know that him and Lori was married. 
before she uh well to death do us part because she, she she's she's dead now nah, but uh he had his wedding ring and, and that right there is, is um symbolic to me because when i seen that wedding ring i pretty much said wow he's still of course he's, he he was gonna still think about him because that was his wife but he still you know cherished that that, that well he still cherished that relationship with him and Lori had even after what she did with Shane because he still had on that wedding ring he never took it out I was like, wow, that's pretty powerful in that episode. And, and this also, also in this episode, uh, the bandits get revealed. The bandits that bust into the house. These people right here are so cruel. And remember, I said this in my last review. I said that the characters in The Walking Dead are placed within a dying civilization to test their morality and, and, and watch to see how much their, how much their um, morality melts within a dying civilization. This right here proved, pretty much proved that I was right because we seen bandits. I mean, they, I mean, these bandits was, was very brutal. I mean, that was so brutal. They were so brutal. They attacked their own group members. Cause I remember when, I remember, I remember when Rick was upstairs and he was laying down and we can hear when the bandits first get in the house. They, they, they literally hurt one of their group members. And I don't know what he did, but I remember them saying that he was a traitor and he was going to have to pay for it. So I don't know what he did for them to do that, but like I said, they did mention that he was a traitor and they ain't like him for it. And I don't know, like I say, was it was it some was it some food or something he was stealing and he wasn't letting them know about it when they was ramshacking houses? I don't know what happened, but they did call him a traitor. And the next thing you know, I hit a guy scream. He literally screams. And I remember once he screamed, they were talking to one of the guys told him, go ahead and put him down because he's bleeding. He's bleeding real bad. And one of the guys that, that, that comes upstairs and comes in the same room with Rick that had blood on his boots. And you can see you can see Rick looking at it. And man, it's they brutal. And you can and you can hear. After after that, after that, you can hit him go downstairs, and one of the guys tell, and one of the, one of the guys in the group tells the other one, "Come down here and clean up your mess." Talking about killing them, I was like, "Man!" And they did kill him, but we never got to see it. Also, in this episode, the bandits are fucking rapists. They were talking about raping Michonne for some of you who didn't hear that. Because the same brown t-shirt that Michonne wear, where, where she used to wear before she changed it in this episode and put that and put that white and put that white long sleeve t-shirt on, Michonne took off her first t-shirt and she had and she was washing it and she I guess she left it in some water or something to let it soak to get the stains out. And one of the, and, and the bandits found it, and they was waiting on Michonne to come back so they could rape her. And I mean, literally, they didn't. They, I mean, literally, they, 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 they it was, it was, it was crazy because they didn't kill because it got so bad. Even, even one of the members in the group was saying he want to go first when she get back. And, and, and another member of the group knew it was a woman, and how I know they was waiting on Michonne because one of them says. Why would she? Well, well, why would she? Well, well why would she leave her, sh her her shirt? Why why would she wash her shirt and then just leave it here and just and, and then just go somewhere else? So they know she was there, but they ain't know she had more people. With, that, that was literally waiting to rape her, and that's why I say you get to see how much a human morality melts within a dying civilization because we've seen this. Hell, we've seen one guy. Well, we seen two guy, the um the, the bed scene. We seen a guy take his own group member and damn near kill him over a spot over over a damn bed. Now tell me, tell me, man, you you don't see no morality or no humanity melting when when you have another human killing a, almost choking out another human over a bed. And also in that scene, I remember when. That guy was choking that other guy, and we can see Rick. We can see Rick looking at him while he was getting choked out. That guy didn't die. He didn't die, and he saw Rick. The problem was he was unconscious. That's the reason why he didn't turn like the other guy did that Rick had killed in the bathroom. 
and he saw Rick. So maybe this could be some foreshadowing of Rick meeting this group again. It, it could be because that guy seen him and that guy was not dead. He was unconscious. Now, maybe maybe they could have killed that guy after. But no, he was still up. He was still in that room laying on that floor after Rick left. And he seen him. So we might see the bandits again. They might show back up. I, I'm telling them they're going to show back up. So uh, moving on. I uh. Let's talk about let's talk about the uh the, the scene with Rick and when he killed a guy in the bathroom because that scene didn't make no sense to me. The killing part made sense, but as soon as Rick busts in the bathroom, a lot of people thought the guy was using the bathroom. Me personally, I, I thought the guy was using the bathroom or he was jacking out. But it's revealed to me it it wasn't the case because the guy was sitting on the toilet and the toilet seat was still sitting down. He wasn't sitting on the toilet, he was sitting on top of the toilet seat. In in uh well not the toilet seat but the uh the, I, I forgot the name of the part where you close the toilet he was sitting on top of that and he still had on all I mean literally everything his pants was zipped up he had his belt on hell his shirt was even tucked in that scene and and a lot of viewers thought that guy was using the bathroom when it's obvious he wasn't. I don't I didn't get that scene like I say I don't get the scene I don't get this Rick playing Mission Impossible. And that and like I said, this episode was all right, but moving on. Next, Michonne is it's right. He was the very this the this right. He was the good parts of the episodes when Michonne opens up to Carl, and she tells Carl about her son because we can tell that Michonne and Carl has this 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 they they built this relationship now where Carl can tell her almost anything and Michonne can tell him almost anything. And it's revealed in this episode that Carl was the first person that Michonne actually opened up to hell she was with andrea for eight months and she never opened up to andrea but she opens up to carl and she tells carl that she had a three-year-old son his name was dion or deandre anthony but she never revealed what happened to him you can you can you can, you can see how she tells carl each room we go to and we clean out, i give you some information out of those three rooms and she pretty much gave it to him and we can see in one of the scenes with Michonne, because we know Michonne loves art. We can see her pick that art up. And we can see her, after she picked the art up, she can see something's clearly wrong with that art. You see, you can see how the, how the artist, whoever did it, has put blood on it, made the eye different color. They, they, they messed it up. And you can see how Michonne goes into an empty room. And then she goes into another room that's all pink, look like um, pink painting. And it's revealed in this episode that those people, that, that that woman committed suicide. She killed all of the children, and then she killed herself. And I remember what Herschel, I remember what Beth said Herschel said. If you don't have hope, what's the point of living? And that was deep because a lot of people don't have hope. A lot of people don't have hope. In the, in, the, in the type of world they live in. And a lot of people choose the quick way because they don't want to suffer. And they, and they, and they, and they don't uh, want to live in that world. And they don't want to change. They, and, I, and I feel that a lot of people in The Walking Dead, some people that commit suicide, some of them are, are, are afraid of change because they know, they're gonna, they know in the long run that the well, they're going to they're gonna have to step out their boundaries. And do and, and do something that they never did before to survive, and a lot of people don't want to have to go through that. So some people just take the quick way out and don't want to suffer. And we seen in this episode, and we can see when Michonne sees that, we can see a glimpse. Well, not even a glimpse. What I got out of that scene was a symbolic scene because when I seen it, I was like, you know what, Mike? Because I came up with this thing. I was like, Mike committed suicide, and I think Mike killed her baby. Killed her baby too. Because I remember Mike asked her, why? And, 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 and when Mike asked her that, when he asked her why, he basically meant why. Why live? And, and we can see in that scene that it's, it kind of replays back to her, that suicide scene. We can see how the woman that has blown her, her brains out. 
in that scene, and it, it comes back to when she remembers what happened with her. So, yeah, moving on. Next, let's, let's finish this up. We see Abraham, and, and at this point, that's the opening scene. We see Abraham killing zombies, and we see Tara, and we see Tara, she talks to Abraham, and she says, I never seen it before because Abraham was getting pleasure and enjoyment, and, and enjoyment out of that. And she said, I never seen that before. I never seen somebody kill him and, and be and smile about it. And she says, you, and she says, uh, you, 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 um, she says, uh, you, 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 uh, I think she says, I'm trying to think, you smile, pretty much saying that he smiled about it, about what he was doing. And he enjoyed it. And then he goes on to tell her that uh, he's just a lucky guy. And you can tell that Abraham have, have this faith and this hope because of Eugene. Because before Eugene, well, before you, um, Eugene came into the picture, Abraham didn't believe in faith and hope because, well, because, well, because of what happened in his past and what he had to do in his past. And he stopped believing, but Eugene is that faith and hope because he thinks Eugene has a cure, a well, a, 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 well, a cure to uh to to uh to to, to to well well to stop this. In our reality, Eugene don't and he just don't know this yet, but at this point, Eugene is that faith and hope. And you can see how Abraham is so dedicated to getting this guy to Washington DC. Because he think he think Eugene can fix he think Eugene can fix this. And that's the reason why he told Tara after he got through killing those zombies, he says he's a lucky he he says I'm, he says I'm a lucky guy. Because he have hope and faith riding his, riding with him right now. So I love that scene. Next, let's talk about and like I said, I, um, I, I talk about this scene not yet. Well, you have Michonne and Carl talking in the living room. You can see how they talking about Carl talking about talking about all the bad milk, all the bad milk that he tried, and he says that he rather try uh Judah's baby uh ba or, or baby powder milk. And you can see when he mentioned it, he catches this up because he he thinks he think his sister is dead, his baby sister Judith is dead. And you can see how he gets angry about it, and he just he just walks out. And you can see Michonne with her new white T-shirt on. That's the reason why I'm saying uh those rapists were those um those bandits have found her old T-shirt. The new T-shirt she got on, she took the old one off, and they found her washing. They they see they saw she left the other one in there. And uh yeah yeah after that uh but after that we had we had that scene when Michonne tries to open up to Carl because after that like I say Rick says after he hear um Carl laugh he tells Michonne in the kitchen that I never heard Carl laugh like that in a while and it felt good to hear and he told her I can't be his best friend uh his best friend or something. something um something to that I can't remember but he tells her that and he asks her could she do it. And she pretty much uh do it, and she tries. She, and, 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 and you can tell his anger about Judah's death after he after he said that in the kitchen. Well, after he said that in the dining room, I think, because after she tries to play with him again, he don't want to play. I mean, she was putting cheese in her mouth, trying to trying to you know have fun with him, and he didn't want to do it. And she told and she told him my my um three year old son used to always laugh at me. He thought I was funny. All right, and uh. I love that scene. Like I say, we got this scene was so fucking beautiful. I love Michelle. Man. I love it how he opened up about her. Next, we have Glenn and we have Tara. And at this point, Glenn is still trying to look for Maggie. And at this point, Abraham is not allowing it. Abraham is one of those people who don't sugarcoat shit with you. I always say this. He tell you straight up. He tell he, he tell Glenn he needs to move on. And Glenn can't cope with that because Glenn still have hope that Maggie is still out there. And him and Abraham have a scuffle. And that, and also, I found some bad writing when it came to that scene with Eugene. Because I remember Abraham, after you after Eugene, after they killed those zombies, because we can see how Eugene has very bad fire, fire and uh, accuracy when it comes to handling the gun. He cannot handle a gun that good because he had actually hit the, hit the army truck. And he was able to damage it, but here's the problem, and, and, and this right here, why I say that right and confusing, because Abraham said after that, how this army truck got hit with uh, grenades, got hit with all type of shit that was way more powerful 
than that gun Eugene used, but it couldn't do it. But yet, those type of explosions didn't do that, 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 that truck shit, but yet, that gun Eugene had did? What the hell? So, uh, yeah, they, they had that. And like I say, Abraham is trying to get to Washington, D.C. Because like I say, being in a group is the most powerfulest thing you can have in a zombie apocalypse. It's the most powerful. It's always it was always it was it was always mentioned in the episode. So I just this right here was my review for episode eleven of the Walking Dead title claim. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to uh you know thumbs up the video, leave a comment down below, and uh have a nice day and God bless you. Peace.